hi guys good morning good evening good afternoon what as soon as i record you wanna okay what's up what's up oh god i should have gave her a treat okay listen come on baby i can't right now i don't really know how to start this video off but i do want to say if you spot the hole in my shirt yeah it's the hole in my shirt so <laughs> I just finished eating some tacos and I can't lie I'm a tad bit sleepy but I wanted to go ahead and get this video out before it before time progresses because this video just has to come out um <laughs> as you can tell by the title I am going to be talking about my experience in the Michigan flood that just happened now if you are not familiar with the Michigan flood that just took place I will briefly explain it to you about two weeks ago it rained for almost two weeks straight and therefore it caused a lot of flooding the flooding caused streets like major streets and major freeways to close shut down it caused houses and basements to flood out there were power outages Accidents left and right I think there was even a sinkhole and then when you mix that with some of the buffoonery of people swimming and pulling out jet skis and canoes and just lollygagging in the freeway water you could imagine that it was catastrophe it was complete chaos so now that you know I'm gonna go ahead and just get straight into my story because let's 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 hurry up okay if you are not aware I actually live in Michigan okay I'm a counted as ignorance but I have never before witnessed or been inside of a flood I've never been directly affected by a flood as far as my memory goes I can't remember ever really being in a flood with living in Michigan though I know there has been floods but just like the blackout from a long time ago I don't recall I don't recall that situation though I knew it I know the big blackout happened so as you all know or if you're not aware I do regional which means that every week I come home this particular time my company gave me a load to come back home and the idea was that I was going to come and do a live unload in Michigan and then I was going to take the trailer to a drop lot close to Michigan but it was in Ohio and then I was gonna bobtail back home that was the goal so I pulled into Michigan, everything was fine, you know. I wasn't stopped in any way, there wasn't a terrible amount of traffic. Everything seemed okay. Now I can't lie to you, I was not totally hip to the severity of this flood. I was not keeping tabs, all I knew was that it was raining, but it had been raining in multiple states, not just Michigan, and so far so good on my end, you know what I'm saying? So I did not know the exact measure of what it meant to be flooding in Michigan when I got here. So judging by how I came in, everything was Gucci, so I pulled into my stop and I got unloaded and then I started to head out so that I can go to Ohio. Immediately, once I started to go towards the freeway I was trying to go to, I was immediately halted by traffic and then I started to recognize that the freeway was closed. So, you know, I used GPS and the GPS was telling me to get on the freeway and so I recognized the GPS was not updated with the fact that the freeway was closed. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to find an alternate route. So I started to go towards another freeway that I knew would still take me to the same destination. And slowly but surely, I recognized that that freeway was closed. So this happened about three or four times where I would try to ride the service drive or I would try to go to an alternate freeway and each time things were closed. It's so flooded. This is like my third freeway or now I have to back up out of the freeway. Really quick, I also just want to mention something that I totally forgot, but amidst the chaos, there were also a bunch of other things going on. Like for instance, when I would go to get onto a freeway that looked like it was open, there would be cars coming literally off the freeway from the entrance ramp because they would have no other choice but to come out of the freeway because it was blocked. And so there were a lot of issues where the cops weren't getting to all the freeway entrances quick enough. And so we didn't have the idea that the freeway was closed until we got halfway into the freeway. So at this point, I had been driving for about an hour, okay? And 
I can't lie to you, I started to get a tad bit stressed out. So I had to park and reevaluate myself. Not to mention there were a bunch of trucks, okay? There wasn't, it wasn't just me. There were trucks everywhere. It was already an understanding in my head that if I'm not the only truck scrambling around out here, it truly is not a way to get out. I ended up on this one street where after going around in circles like four times, I started to recognize that there were trucks parked along both sides of the street like for like two miles just trucks parked there like with their hazard lights on because they didn't know where else to go how to leave from where they were at and with that i'm like okay new plan so i parked over off to the side and i started to think of what i needed to do and so i told myself okay if i can't find a way out in the next 20 minutes i need to find me a vacant lot because i still live here my objective was as long as i can find a place to drop this trailer then I'll just bobtail home because I, I don't want to leave and then they end up closing a freeway to come back in or whatever. I just didn't know exactly what was going on. After about 20 more minutes of driving, I started to recognize there was nowhere else to go. And so I did end up finding a lot where it had multiple random company trailers. It looked like I wouldn't have had too much trouble if I dropped my trailer there. So after that assessment, I said, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this trailer off. I'm gonna write a note and put it inside of the, um the um inside of the little doohickey thing on the trailer and um i'm just gonna leave it at that because <laughs> i need to go home at this point i'm running out of hours i would just rather go home that was the objective anyway after the load that i had i was supposed to come home so i was just gonna alleviate going to ohio because there was no way for me to get there so I dropped the trailer and in my mind I'm like okay cool now that I don't have a trailer attached to me and I'm bobtailing the only thing I have to really worry about is height because my length is not going to affect the streets that I'm on and so I felt like I was in the clear right wrong so far at this point is where I started to recognize that it wouldn't have mattered if I had my trailer or not you have already saw the previous clip you could see just a little bit of what I was dealing with there were flood sites everywhere most of the freeways were closed and the only ones that were open were the ones that were open only because cops didn't get to the entry points yet to close them once i looked on my gps i recognized that i was about 10 miles away from where i wanted to be at. i did not know how to get there i had circled around the perimeter for like two hours with only my tractor and i recognized that all of the freeways were closed I was stressing out so I got on the phone with a family member at this point I needed help so <laughs> because I was struggling to figure out what I needed to do I've never been the most street savvy after being on the phone they were like okay you need to take this major street down all the way to this street and then you gonna end up turning right and left and all that so I started taking their directions and eventually I came across this one like mess up like i don't even know how to explain it but <laughs> i ended up going down the street it was like a two-way street right i'm going down this way the lane that comes towards me is blocked as in the street is closed on that side so i only have this way to go i can't turn back around except i started to recognize that there were cars that were coming from where i was going but instead of going where the road was closed they were coming into our lane so we had to slow down and stop and wait for them to come it was a weird situation it was really chaotic i finally get down past this half block road and when i get down here i recognize that the next underpass the water is super high and there are cars parked with their hazard lights all along this underpass and so i'm like oh shoot i can't go that way i can't keep going down the street so i turn left i'm like okay if i turn left maybe I can go down from the other street I turn left and long story short I come across this underpass and it's flooded just like the other one except I feel like I can probably make it but I recognize as well that the bridge is fairly low so I had I sat there with my hazard lights on this cars trying to go by mind you everywhere i see a flood there is a car that's like vacant and in the water so it's looking real hectic out here i finally google maps it and i recognize that this bridge is actually too short it's 13.5 and i'm 13.6 so 
So I'm like, doggone it. So I had to back my way from where I was at, turn back around, and then come the way opposite of where I was going, which I was frustrated about because it's like, doggone it. I just came from this way and I'm trying to come from it. So I start going down this street and I'm preparing to do the same thing that those cars was doing when they were coming through the side of the street that wasn't closed. But this time there's a cop that's sitting there. So I start driving past him and he's like honking his horn and he's like, uh, turn around. So I'm like rolling down my window and I'm like, I can't go this way. And he's like, turn around. I'm like, sir, I can't go this way. So I'm thinking he heard me. He starts speaking to the people behind me. And so I start going this way because I'm like, okay, he's not addressing me no more. I'm about to go this way, right? Child, no, he followed me down this, down that path and got in front of me and was like, turn around. So I'm like, I can't go this way, which I don't know what he thought I was supposed to be doing. So he's telling me, you have to turn left, you have to turn left. And he's like catching an attitude. And I'm like, the bridge is too low. I can't turn left, it's 13.5. And he's like, turn around, da da da. So he's pretty much keeping me from going the rest of the way down this street which I wouldn't have considered going down the street had it not been a row of cars that was able to go down this street right so I'm like you know what forget it I'm gonna turn back around because he's already getting upset and y'all know how cops get I'm just like you know what whatever so I start turning back around and at this point I'm like I'm unsure what I can do somehow I ended up stuck in this area so now I'm stuck in between two streets and I noticed that another truck passes me and they end up risking it and going under the bridge that was flooded. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do that. So I follow them and I go under the bridge and I end up making it. I'm like, okay. So mind you, that took about an hour worth of my time. And honestly, none of that meant anything because as soon as I went further down, the street ended up blocked. So, so I ended up trying to enter the freeway from other points down this way, right? I'm looking on my maps, I'm downloading new apps. Mind you, I'm still seeing catastrophe. I'm seeing cars parked in the middle of the street. They were causing traffic, just random cars parked in the middle of the street, blocking lanes and stuff, and all types of stuff. I'm seeing all types of accidents and things like that. Cops everywhere. Uh, red signs detour signs that don't make sense because they're not updated detour signs and all types of stuff so this is where the story gets like 12 times worse after about another hour worth of me trying to figure out where to go I end up getting on this road for like the fifth time and this time around, I tell myself, I'm just gonna get on the first ramp I see. Because every time I think I'm about to get on the freeway ends up closed, maybe if I just get on something, I'll end up at a different area and then I will just turn. I, at this point, I'm just like frantic and I just want to get home. You can understand like after all this time, it's now in the afternoon, like one o'clock. I've been doing this since 8 a.m and i'm just annoyed so your girl ended up on the doggone bridge to canada i'm gonna be honest with you i've never been to canada before i've never been on that bridge before and i'm a little embarrassed to <laughs> say this to be quite honest because uh i didn't even know the severity the detriment behind getting on this freeway on this ramp I had no idea that once you go forward, you can't go back. So if you are unaware, like to the highest extent, you've never been in Michigan, you don't know any of this, I'ma just tell you right now. Everybody know, except for me apparently, everybody know that you are not supposed to get on this ramp towards Canada. Because once you get on this ramp, you are unable to get off you are going to go to Canada. You're going to board the Ambassador Bridge, okay? And you will have to figure out a way to come back to the US. You about to go to a different country. So 
I end up on this ramp, right? And I'm driving, immediately I start to feel antsy. I'm like, uh-oh. Something was telling me that there is no outlet to where I'm going. So right before the Ambassador Bridge, I end up parking off to the side where trucks are allowed to park. And I'm right across from the duty shop. And at this point, I'm like, okay, all right, okay, all right. And I'm trying to talk to myself because I'm like, okay, this situation has escalated. I'm not in Canada, but I might very well end up there. And this is not where I'm trying to go. I'm trying to go home. So I tell myself, okay, I'm just going to go into the duty shop because I'm parked and I see the duty shop. I'm like, I'm just gonna go in there. I'm going to ask them how to get back into Michigan. I'm just gonna talk to them, right? So I get out and I'm gonna be honest with you, the moment I got out the truck, I started to feel like I was doing the walk of shame because it's like, I feel like all eyes are on me. Like, I know this chick didn't just get on the ramp to Canada. Like, I'm just feeling that because it's like, I feel stupid at this point. So I start walking into the duty shop just to recognize that nobody was at any desk or anything. Nobody looked like they worked in the duty shop. And so I was just standing around, looking around for people and couldn't really find nobody that was like of duty. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I come back to my truck. I'm like, okay, the only other thing that I can think of right now is to call 911, which I never want to call 911. But I'm like, I'm gonna just go ahead and do it because time is ticking. I'm ready to just get home and I need somebody to tell me the real. So I'm calling 911. As I'm about to dial it, I'm like, wait, before I call 911, let me Google what it means to get on the Canadian bridge, right? So I start Googling it. And like the one of the first things that pops up is this story. It's like a news report of how this person ended up on the Canadian bridge and ended up needing to get deported back to Michigan because they didn't have any of their information. In the story, it's like everybody knows that you're not supposed to get on the bridge to Canada. So reading this story, I'm starting to feel even more stupid and I'm starting to feel a little frazzled, a tad bit panicked because it's like, dog, what? I'm gonna get deported because I didn't have a passport. I didn't have my enhanced license. I didn't have anything with me. So I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so I call 911 and at this point I start like, rambling they're like 911 what is your emergency I'm like um I don't even know if I'm supposed to be calling y'all but hear me out I'm on the Canadian bridge I don't know what to do I'm just trying to get home it's a Michigan flood I've been out here for hours and I don't know how I'm supposed to get home but I don't have my passport I don't have nothing what am I supposed to do and she's like um let me transfer you to Canadian da, 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 da. I don't even know who she was transferring me to but it was apparently someone that was gonna be able to better help me and assist me in this situation so I'm like, okay so I like my nerves are getting bad at this point it, it, it takes a lot for me to get to this point I'm getting there at this point because it's like I ain't never been in this territory before so I finally get transferred to this lady she sounds relatively young probably around my age so I explain this to her I'm like, hey, la, la, I'm on the bridge. I don't know what I'm doing. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm explaining to her. I'm like, I'm not necessarily on the bridge. I'm off the ramp in the like mid area where they're doing the fuel. And then I can park off to the side and I can walk to the duty shop. I'm not on the bridge. I'm not in Canada yet. What do I do? The first thing she like tells me is, um, well, you're not supposed to do that. And it's just like, it's already done. It, it, it's, it's already done. I don't know how that's supposed to help me. I'm like, ma'am, I I know that. Trust me, I, I, I know that. I know that now, if anything. Um, but what am I supposed to do about it? She's like, well, to be honest, I've never been out of the country, so. So I'm like, dog, are you serious? I'm like holding my head like, bro, I know, I know this isn't happening. I'm honestly like losing hope with this conversation. And she's like, what I would suggest you do is just get on the bridge because there's no turning back and you're gonna have to talk to them on the bridge about how to get back home. I end up getting off the phone because it's like she's not really helping and as far as I'm concerned I could have made that choice on my own. So I decide okay I'm just gonna drive onto this bridge. So I end up driving on the bridge. Oh my god. And I get all the way across the bridge and then I end up in line. We're waiting for the booth 
where we talk to the people and I just start having a meltdown. I feel so stupid. I feel so embarrassed. I think I'm gonna get deported. I'm about to block this line of people. I'm bobtailed, so they already know what it is. Like, I don't have anything on me to be even bringing into Canada. What type of truck bobtails to Canada? I don't even know. I've never even been to Canada. I've never been out of the country. And now I'm in Canada because I've been stuck in Detroit trying to go from here to there for almost three hours. But because it rained for like three days straight, it's flooded and so now i have absolutely no way to get where i was trying to get and i am just super 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 stressed i'm i'm unbelievably stressed i called 911 and they told me to come over here she told me she never even been out the country so why were you the one answering the phone oh my god and and like I don't even know what my reaction is right now. I Like 63% of me wants to cry. The other half wants to laugh. The other half is just like wanting to close my eyes and wake up and be home. I'm just so frustrated. I'm so unbelievably frustrated. I don't know what they're gonna tell me when I come up here, but I know that they about to be looking at me like I'm stupid. The lady on the phone when I called 911 was like, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. Like, I don't freaking know that. I stopped before I came all the way across the bridge. Like, I stopped at the duty shop because I recognized where I had been, where I went. But I, me never even crossing the bridge before, I did not know it was this doggone detrimental, that there's no way to come back. It's just my own ignorance, doggone it. But I would not have been in that position if I would have just been able to drive down the street like normal. But no, every single freeway was closed. Almost every street with a low passage was closed because it was flooded. I done dealt with so much stuff today, man. Oh my God, Lord, every time I pray that you just relieve some of the stress, it's like some more has been added. It's just irritating, bro. I don't even know what my reaction is right now. Is it crying? Is it frustration? Is it laughter? I'm, I think I'm hysterical right now because I'm on the freaking Canada, the Canadian bridge. I ain't never been here before. And the first time I come, it's illegally. And now I'm about to get deported back to Michigan, I think. I don't freaking know. Now, I was going through it. I can't lie to you. Not many things get me this worked up. But if you could understand, knowing my goal and how hard it was to just get to this goal was blowing my emotions like overboard because the objective was for me to get home. And now I'm in a different country. That was blowing my mind. Like, I'm like, bro, what is going on? All because of brain? Like, I was freaking out um and i don't freak out normally but this was stressing me before i actually get to the booth they end up putting the arm down before i can get to the booth at first i'm i'm feeling guilty i'm like dog do they know that i'm not supposed to be here like you know when you feel like you in trouble i'm thinking that they about to keep me from coming to the booth for some reason like am i like what's going on then i look down and i notice that everybody's arm is down so i'm like oh, okay they're changing shifts so thankfully I feel like this is God. Thankfully, they changed shifts right before I came to the booth. So I got someone who was fresh on the job. I was their first, I don't know, customer or whatever. I was their first person, their first driver. And I feel like that helped with the situation because they had more patience than say someone who has been on their shift the entire day. So I got to the booth and I'm like, look, I ain't supposed to be here. I don't have no passport. I don't have my passport. I don't have nothing. I was not even supposed to get here. I, it's a Michigan flood, you know, <laughs> trying to tell me it's a flood. Listen, he's like, okay, okay, okay. He's like, could I just have your license? Um, so I start handing him my license and everything. And he's like, what's the uh, license plate number of this truck? And I'm like, uh, 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 I don't know. It's, it should be in the front. And he's like, I didn't see a, a, a license plate on the front. 
and that's when it clicked to me I'm like oh right this is a new truck and they gave me a temporary so I'm looking around for my temporary license plate you know when you're stressed you can't really think of where you put something I knew I put it somewhere secure but I wasn't I couldn't remember where I put it so I eventually grabbed my book and I opened it and the thing that really was freaking me out was that I had just received a notice that morning where it said we have your new license plate come get it ASAP and so my plan was to go get it as soon as I got off my 35 reset because I ain't had a, enough time to go you know and then still make it to my 35 reset so that was the goal I'm over here praying to God because I couldn't remember like dang am I expired today or is it in the next couple of days I couldn't remember because I was frazzled so I opened the book and I'm like praying like Lord please let me not be expired today and I grab it and it was supposed to expire that day I'm like thank the Lord in heaven <sighs> so I hand them the paperwork and at this point I'm like super stressed because it's like dog I shouldn't even have to be dealing with this I want to go home I finally give him all my info or whatever and so he's like all right what you're gonna do is you're gonna go all the way down you're gonna turn left do not turn right go left and you're gonna follow this this lane all the way until you end up at this door and this door is gonna say blah 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 I can't remember what it said you're gonna park as far from the lane as you can walk in there make sure all your doors are unlocked they're going to do a search through your entire cab and make sure you take your dog in there with you I'm like okay so I pull all the way over there I open all my doors and then I grab pepper and we walk in there so I go in there they have me fill out a couple of pieces of paper or whatever I'm like am I gonna get deported is anything gonna happen and they're like no 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 everything's fine you're not the only person that does this it's perfectly fine we're just gonna check your cab as long as you don't have anything like blah 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 this or that then you should be fine um, and then from here you're gonna go to customs they're going to take all your info and then we're going to give you paperwork so that you can go back to Michigan I'm like okay cool so after about 10 minutes of me sitting in there while they check my truck which they checked it real tough I finally go back in there and my stuff is jumbled everywhere and I'm low-key like yeah all right you could have put some of this stuff back but I, at this point I'm just like I just want to make it back to Michigan so I pull over to the other side I go to customs I got pepper with me we walking into the customs building in there I go to the little area she tells me she's about to do my paperwork for me and then so I'm sitting down at this point even pepper is stressed like we both stressed they finally give me my paperwork I get back in the truck and me and Pepper start heading back to the bridge. I get to the US booth and they're just like, okay, let me get all your info. The same info that the last booth, the Canadian booth asked me for. I gave it to them and then from there I was able to get back into practically the same situation that I had left with, which was I still don't know how to get home. All the roads are closed. Now it's later in the day. It's traffic now and I'm still running out of time. But at least I'm not in Canada. Needless to say, y'all, I would say about, I'm gonna be honest with you, about three more hours went by before I finally made it home. I was, I felt strung out, y'all. I felt like my edges were falling out. I felt like so stressed and I felt so annoyed because I was so close to where I was trying to get to but I just couldn't get there because everything was closed and it didn't matter if I was on street or if I was on the freeway I was still somehow gonna be blocked from where I was trying to get to and so after looking at maps after maps after map I was literally crossing out each street that I wasn't able to get on because it was blocked or closed each freeway I finally found one Avenue after three more hours I finally found one Avenue that got me where I needed to be at and child when I finally made it where I was supposed to be at I was on the flow I'm like thank the Lord in heaven I felt like I could have had a heart attack with all of the stress <laughs> that I was going through so yeah y'all I, I don't know how cohesive this video was but just understand this 
flooding ain't no joke and my biggest lesson is to pull out a map immediately because GPS definitely wasn't in any way shape or form any help for me any help the best bet for anybody who ends up in a situation similar to me is to be bobtailed and to have a map because I don't know how I could have gotten where I got with my trailer don't get me wrong it's possible but I would have felt even more restricted and understand I was restricted than a mug honestly after everything I think the only thing that really makes me feel weird is just the fact that while all this chaos is going on in my truck there were people out there jet skiing in the water and canoeing and swimming in this water and I just want to say did somebody forget about what is on the street when it's not flooded because I'm a driver so I know that I almost always run past roadkill, trash, glass, oil spills, fuel, antifreeze, dirt, sewage, all types of stuff and let's not forget humans ain't the only animals out here apparently because we love water but animals love water too and I just feel like while these folks was out here in this water it was likely that a couple rodents was in that mug too all I really want to say is if there's another flood I just pray that our family members decide against being in freeway water I just don't understand I don't understand how how much freedom are you looking for because that's wild that is too much you taking a huge risk to be in that water like that and then also the jet skiing I get it like that's an experience that you'll never ever ever be able to experience and I feel like they just they really wanted to take that chance just to be able to say it to their grandkids but child all you need to do is end up in one area where there's a big old rock and you child you over the 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 craziness the craziness I just wanted to share this story because so far my experiences are tallying up okay my experiences with being out on the road and ending up in the most weird situations they are tallying up like a mug so I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video I love you all so much and I cannot wait to see you in the next video bye